welcome friends this is the 24th session of this course on manufacturing strategy we discussed about uh, various order winners qualifiers in our earlier sessions and based on those qualifiers and winners we discussed that manufacturing strategy will be developed we discussed that how different types of manufacturing strategy taxonomies were developed and in all those taxonomies quality was one very important aspect even when we were discussing the order winners and qualifiers we discuss the role of quality as a very important order winner or qualifier though the characteristic of order winners and qualifiers which we discussed we discussed that these will change with respect to market these may change with respect to products these may change with respect to time so therefore for the same product quality may be sometime qualifier sometime it may be a winner during the same time for one market quality can be qualifier for other market quality can be a winner but it is very very important to understand that quality is at the center of manufacturing excellence without quality it is impossible to conceptualize the concept of manufacturing excellence and manufacturing excellence is important for manufacturing strategy and manufacturing strategy is important for achieving the stage of world class manufacturer so you can say this whole series of activities starts from quality management and will finally take you to world class manufacturing status so therefore in this session we will be discussing about that what is that strategic role of quality how quality can provide that strategic aspect strategic advantage to an organization so when we start this discussion let us initially focus for some time about the meaning of quality and when i say the meaning of quality i like to define quality from two point of view and these two point of views are one point of view is of manufacturer and the other point of view is of the user customer now when i say quality from the manufacturer's point of view when i say quality from the manufacturer's point of view so this meaning of quality is more related to meeting the specification this is meeting specifications and when i say quality from the user's point of view this meaning of quality is more related to fitness for use and when i say the strategic role of quality we need to converge these two perspectives of quality so that uh, you can achieve the manufacturer's objective that is the meeting specification conformance to specification and fitness for use and uh, if my manufacturing capabilities can achieve both these things simultaneously if my manufacturing capabilities can achieve both these things simultaneously then i am able to use quality for my strategic advantage if i am not able to do this thing then i will be either focusing on my manufacturing processes or only on the product aspects rather i need to focus on product quality as well as process quality so both these dimensions if i am able to fulfill so you can have one more way of defining the quality one is the product quality and second is the process quality so both product quality and process qualities are equally important 
to achieve the strategic role of quality in the manufacturing excellence. Now, what is this product quality and process quality? The product quality is what is the final product? You have a very good product design and uh, this product is able to fulfill the expectations of the customer. So, the good designed product defines the product quality. Now, you do not have proper machining system, you do not have a proper measurement system, you do not have proper storage system. So, even if a product is very well designed, a product is very well conceptualized, but because you do not have a good system, a good manufacturing capability to produce that product, you will not be able to achieve customer satisfaction. So, you have high product quality, but poor process quality. On the other hand, it is also possible that your product design is not very appropriate, that product may not be liked by the customer, but you have a very good inspection system, you have a state of the art CNC machines, you have a very well developed warehousing system, you have a state of the art logistics system in your organization. So, you have a very good degree of process quality, but you have poor product quality. This is also not going to serve the purpose, because ultimately the product which will come out of this excellent process has poor result. It is not going to fulfill the purpose of the customer. So, customer will not be willing to purchase that product. So, we require simultaneously both a very good product, a very good product which can fulfill, which can meet the customer requirement and that product should be produced from the process which is able to deliver that type of product. So, product quality and process quality are again required simultaneously to achieve the strategic role of quality in our manufacturing processes. If one is missing, other is not going to provide you the strategic advantage. That is what we wanted to mention here. Now, when we have understood that uh, what is the meaning of uh, manufacturer's view of quality, what is the meaning of user's view of quality, let us try to understand one very interesting thing about quality that how because uh, in our earlier sessions also we have emphasized about quality and there is so much available about quality that you can read in hours and hours about quality because uh, people have defined quality in their own ways. So, if you read American literature, you read Japanese literature, you read uh, European literature, you will find uh, lot of variations and uh, therefore, you will not be able to draw proper lines in black and white uh, that what is quality and what is not quality. But just for a generic understanding, if I say that uh, uh, how the quality has moved from the past era to the current view, current strategic view of quality. So, you see earlier our meaning of quality was related with high end products, those products which are used by elite in the society, these are the quality products. Those products where some kind of exclusivity is involved. So, those exclusive products are the quality products. The products where some prestige is associated, if I am using that product, so it enhances my prestige. So, these types of attributes were associated when we were defining the quality in past. Your exclusivity, the prestige, the high end, these were the important words by which we mean that it is a quality product. But now, what is happening? Now, it is a totally different type of uh, scenario and I am saying that uh, it is the enlightened view of quality. Now, what is this enlightened view of quality? It says that uh, knowing customer's requirement, 
to understand your customer requirement. This is one important aspect of uh, quality. So, a firm, a company may be in various segments. A company is in segment A, B, C, D. So, you know, need to know that what are the requirements of different segments. So, for each segment, if you are able to understand customer requirements specifically that uh, this segment looks for low cost, this segment looks for faster delivery, this segment looks for uh, more safety and therefore, if you see the post office, a very good example. So, post office knows that uh, customers are coming to me and uh, there are options uh, where you can post your letter, post your letter uh, with just 5 rupee stamp. So, these are the customers who are looking low cost solution. Then you can do registry of your uh, envelopes uh, where you are charged somewhere between 15 to 20 rupees. So, some kind of uh, assurance is there that your packet will be delivered to the uh, receiver. And then you have a speed post, those who want uh, assurance as well as uh, faster delivery and uh, therefore, they are ready to pay higher price for the same service. So, you need to understand that what different types of customers are requiring in different segments and accordingly you need to develop your products. So, that is the first fundamental thing to know about quality and therefore, it is known as enlightened view of quality. Then the minimum thing now, the minimum thing once you understand this uh, uh, customer requirement of a segment, then the minimum thing which we need to do is to provide customer satisfaction. That is the bottom line, that is the minimum criteria that we need to provide customer satisfaction. And nowadays, the English has also changed, and this customer satisfaction is no longer taken into a positive way. If I am not very much satisfied, I am not happy with the product and I do not want to talk negative about the product. So, I am say ok, it is uh, good product, uh, it is I am ok ok kind of thing. So, you can say that uh, satisfaction is just a bottom line about the quality of your product. It is not a good quality product if I am just I am just satisfied with that product. So, now what I need? I want customer delightness. We have moved from customer satisfaction to customer delightness. Customer satisfaction has become a thing of past and nowadays modern organizations believe that we need to delight our customers. And how do I delight our customers? By providing the combination of product and process quality. If I am able to match product and process quality which we just discussed that what is the meaning of product quality, what is the meaning of process quality. If we are able to do this kind of combination then it will help us to give customer delight and that is now desirable for the organization. And then we can also add some additional features. Nowadays, when we have simple Gmail to send our messages from one party to another party, so we were very satisfied. But now we have so many added features which are continuously increasing our uh, you can say bonding with use of Gmail and it is very rare that a new user which is coming on email facility will go to any other email service other than Gmail. Because they are continuously adding new features. You can have Google chat, you will have your Google drive, you have lot of sharing facilities, Google docs. So, there are continuously new features which are added and because of the adding of these new features, we actually heighten the customer's enjoyment. So, now you see that in the enlightened view, we are talking about 
customer satisfaction then we move to discuss about the customer delightness and now finally we are talking of customer enjoyment so this customer enjoyment is possible with respect to all types of products you need to see that what value i am offering to customer so therefore this idea of high end exclusivity and prestige is no longer valid depending upon the type of product i want and if in that product i am able to find all the features and i also get some additional feature this will provide me enjoyment so whether this product is adding prestige it is a high end product or not but if it is fulfill my purpose if it is adding some it is providing me some additional benefits i will be more than happy and that will also create a bonding between me and that product so that is the enlightened understanding that is the strategic understanding so now organizations need to understand that uh, the concept of high end and prestige product is no longer valid rather we need to provide this customer enjoyment a customer should enjoy using my product so different types of examples are available where some companies provide only the customer satisfaction while other companies which are more successful in the same business they are providing customer delightness or customer enjoyment and the concept of customer delightness and customer enjoyment is basically oriented or is basically taken from the field of quality management now this whole idea where quality is the central part of manufacturing activity can also be simplified can also understand by this simple diagram now in this simple diagram you see that the past definition of quality was the resource driven earlier when we were talking of uh, high end products uh, exclusive products uh, prestige products so that was the idea which was driven by resource that i should be able to provide right number of products at right time at the right cost at the right place so all these things were the meaning of quality in the previous periods and this whole idea was about how you are using your resources to achieve this particular objective of right numbers right time right cost and right place but now in our enlightened definition of quality when uh, we are seeing that how quality is a measure of customer satisfaction then it is delightness and then it is enjoyment uh, so this whole idea of quality has moved from resource driven to customer driven so you see this is one fundamental change which has happened in the area of quality which was earlier the resource driven and now it is customer driven and here the simple meaning of quality is quality is equal to customer satisfaction or you can say customer delight and then you can also say that quality is more equal to the strength of quality is more when you get the customer enjoyment so quality starts with customer satisfaction in our enlightened view and quality can go up to customer enjoyment from satisfaction and if we are able to achieve this with the change in mindset therefore the discussions related to tqm because this particular aspect cannot be achieved on machines this require a change in mindset and the concept related to tqm total quality management will help us in understanding that change in mindset which is required for achieving this enlightened view of quality so in one of our sessions we will discuss in detail about uh, total quality management and the strategic role tqm can provide 
in world class manufacturing. Now, once we have understood this uh, uh, distinct framework uh, that how quality is central to manufacturing, now quickly we will go to discuss some important attributes of quality which was given by Garvin. So, Garvin gave 8 attributes of quality, we have already discussed uh, uh, these attributes of quality in our discussions when we were discussing uh, order winners and qualifiers. So, we will uh, not be spending much time on these attributes of quality, but it is important that uh, we discuss these attributes of quality to maintain the continuity of our present discussion. Now, the first important attribute of quality is uh, related to performance. Now, performance is basically that uh, what is the primary characteristic of your product. So, the primary characteristic of the product is known as performance. So, if you remember that uh, if I am having an air conditioner in my room, so if that air conditioner is giving me cooling at uh, some uh, particular efficiency level or if I say that the air conditioner has a capacity of uh, 1.5 ton, that is the performance of uh, that air conditioner. So, this is the primary characteristic of my quality. Then the second characteristic of quality, second attribute of quality is the feature. Now, additional characteristics which I add in my product uh, to increase the enjoyment. Now, just we discussed uh, customer satisfaction and then enjoyment. So, now when I am trying to achieve that enjoyment, so for that purpose I may add the Wi-Fi facility or I may add IoT sensor in my air conditioner. So, that adding the IoT sensor so that I can operate my air conditioner using my smartphone is an additional feature, is an additional characteristic of that air conditioner and that is known as feature. So, features actually performance helps me in achieving the satisfaction or may be delight, but features help me to achieve the enjoyment. So, nowadays features are also equally important that uh, how I need to enhance the enjoyment of my customers. Then third is reliability. So, during the life of product, how many times whenever I require the product, the product is readily available to be used, that is the meaning of reliability. It is very hot and humid now and if I want to switch on the AC, whether AC is in working condition or not, that is the meaning of reliability. So, whenever I require a product, product should be available in working condition during its uh, useful life that defines the reliability. More reliability, I get more satisfaction, I get more enjoyment because whenever I require product, it is readily available. So, higher reliability, higher enjoyment, higher delight test. Serviceability, if product fails, how quickly I can repair? If product fails, if after sale services are easily available, I may be able to use the product immediately. Some thing happened in my air conditioner and now this air conditioner is not giving me proper cooling. So, if it is properly serviceable, then I may be able to reuse, restart air conditioner after a small maintenance of 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But if serviceability is low, I may be required to send that AC to some bigger service center and it may take one week or two weeks time to get my AC repaired. So, that is poor serviceability. So, this will reduce my satisfaction, delightness, enjoyment. Durability, how long I can work with that product? Whether I need to change that product in 3 years, 4 years, 5 years. So, more the durability, longer the period of service of the product, more happiness, more delightness, more enjoyment, 
because on one side I am getting good performance, better features and longer duration of the product. So, my cost of using the product per day also decreases. So, durability is also one important dimension of the product. Conformance, whether the product is able to fulfill the specification or not. If I am expecting that the AC is of 1.5 tons, so whether it is exactly of 1.5 tons or not. If I checked by using some measurement criteria and I found that AC is actually 1.3 tons or 1.2 tons, the company is saying that this is 1.5 tons, this will lower my satisfaction. Though the cooling is good enough for my purpose, but still if it is not matching the specification, it will lower down my satisfaction. And if you know how the speakers, a very popular company which is world leader in the field of speakers Bose. If you read the story of development of Bose speakers, you will find that non conforming to the specifications by earlier speakers was the reason of development of Bose speakers. So, conformance to specification design specification is also important thing. Aesthetics, how your product looks like. So, there has to be a proper appearance of the product and that also plays important role in my customer satisfaction, customer enjoyment. And finally, the perceived quality, perceived quality is related to the perception about quality of a product. So, we generate this perception from variety of sources. Some products which are coming from a particular country, you may have higher perception about quality of those products. While similar kind of product which are coming from some other country, you may have lower perception. If company A has two plants, company A has two plants, one in some European country and another in some developing nations. And if you see make in some European nation and make in some developing nation stamp, obviously you will have a perceived quality that if a product has make in some European nation stamp has better quality than for other developing nations stamp. So, that is the perceived quality. Now, the point is that these are 8 attributes of quality. In some of the products, you may find all these 8 attributes, while in some other products, you may not find all these 8 attributes. In some products, depending upon the nature of the product, only few attributes may be available. So, uh, we need to see that what are the attributes, what are the dimensions of quality which are available in my product. I request all of you that uh, in forum try to think of uh, different types of products uh, and uh, try to mention different dimensions of those products uh, and see what are the missing dimensions in some specific products uh, and we may have more interaction offline also. Now, when I am talking of strategic importance of quality, these are the two important reasons for strategic importance of quality and uh, these reasons you will see are somehow interrelated also. The first is the number and capabilities of new entrants into the market. Earlier, there were limited entrants, there were limited players in the market, very few. But in last many years, particularly last two decades, 20 years, the barriers are continuously moving away. And when these barriers are moving away, it is becoming very easy for new entrants to enter into the market. If I take the example of India, pre-liberalization era, no new company can start any manufacturing activity without taking licenses from government of India. So, there was 
a very strict entry barrier for starting manufacturing activities in India. But nowadays all those barriers are not there rather government try to provide how you can encourage more and more investment and there is a continuous emphasis on increasing our position on ease of doing business scale and uh, therefore, more new entrants are entering into the market and therefore, the quality related competition is increasing that is one important thing. And then the second important thing is the greater amount of choice that customers have. Now, because more and more entrants are available, so customers also have more and more choices. Customers are continuously becoming empowered, maybe because of IT, maybe because of other type of uh, uh, exposure, global village, customers are moving from one place to another place, they have more knowledge, they are uh, experiencing different types of uh, products. So, therefore, the issue is that uh, both these things are interrelated and therefore, quality is important even for the new entrants or for the existing players uh, that if you do not focus on the requirements of the quality because now quality is no more a precious product, it is no more a specialized product, it is more related to understanding the customer requirements appropriately. So, uh, quality needs to be handled in the form of this triology and what is this triology that you have to have a very focused attention on quality focused attention with respect to understanding the customers requirement, how these requirements are changing over a period of time. And then you need to understand that quality is going to play a strategic role in your organization. Because in whole order winner and qualifying discussion, we discussed quality as singly one order winner or qualifier, but it is much more than that. Rather, I am saying it is one of the central activity in modern manufacturing. And then we have to have a holistic vision and here comes the role of concepts like TQM. That whole organization should develop that type of culture, that type of mindset that we need to provide quality products to our customer. And when this triology is achieved, you will be able to provide a strategic role of quality to the manufacturing excellence. And in our next session, we will be focusing more on that how to develop that mindset, how TQM can provide quality as a strategic weapon for the organization. So, with this, we come to end of this session. Thank you very much.